All right, guys, we're back, and the Q2 Tesla quarterly updates are out, and all the news uh, channels are going crazy talking about Tesla. Uh, let's see if they're saying positive things or negative things. Um, spoiler alert, it's most likely negative. So let's check it out today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video. There's like 90, over 90% 90 of the you guys watching are not subscribed, so please um, consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers. So thank you very much. Let's go. Tesla share is a little bit uneventful here in the aftermarket, but we do have the numbers and we do have a Mr. Ross Gerber with us this afternoon. President and CEO Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Gerber so Kawasaki. obviously these margins are dropping, Ross. How much was expected uh, relative to what they reported? Well, I think they were kind of in line with what was expected around 18, 18 and a half. And, you know that that number is is okay. I mean, we're see we saw the deterioration of margins from last year, which was you know maybe a unique year, but it's also deteriorated a little bit from last quarter as well. So, so we're still seeing the pressure, but not as much so. And I think this could be the bottom for margins, which is very. Hey, here's a here's an idea, guys, on on news. Um, when interest rates go up and it's more expensive to. Uh, to buy a car these days because interest rates are through the roof, the price has to go down. So yeah, that's probably why things are, uh, prices are down so much, but yeah, that's one of the reasons. No one's Positive talking about stock. it. Well, what makes you think the bottom for margins, Ross? I mean, and aren't they about to launch this cyber truck? Isn't that gonna be expensive? Well, no, because you know, that's CapEx spending that's been spent you know, consistently each quarter. So as they're spending more money in certain areas, they spend less money in other areas because they were ramping Berlin and uh, mm. Austin last year at this time. So, so I don't see an increase in cost due to cyber oh, truck wow. that that's a big deal is out of line. Yeah, yeah, but the, you know they operate this way. <coughs> it's very methodical the way they invest in certain things at certain times and then in other things, so that it's not all lumpy. Uh, at the beginning of Tesla's history, it was a lot of investment up front, but I think now it's a very consistent investment. It's about two billion a quarter in capex. I love that spent. retractable bed. And the, uh, With the, the cover total in the back. operating margin, as you mentioned earlier, that um, well, you mentioned the, the automotive gross margin, right? Uh, 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 in your statement, just to make sure we got them separate here, because the operating margin for the whole company drops down to like ten percent. Ten percent, right? Okay, which is a pretty big drop off from last year. Does it all come from? the the cuts to the prices ross is it's entirely self-inflicted in your mind i, I don't know if it's self-inflicted I, I think that things have changed from last year in a lot of areas and 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 certainly interest rates being one of them you, you know elon's perception in the public hey, being another one of them um, along with just the fact there are competitors now that are maybe not like tesla like but certainly you know, you do have competitors, whether it be Rivian, Polestar, or whatever. So that said, Tesla sold a record amount of cars, and they just had to do it at lower prices. But, but I don't think they have to continue to do this because the price of a Tesla is now within reach for a large amount of consumers. And my belief is that they should use other levers to sell, like advertising and and things that I think will have a much better return than just lowering prices. So I think we got that through to Elon, and and I think that hopefully is what they'll do instead of adjusting prices down, um, which would hurt margins further. What about their comments as far as production in Shanghai? Don't expect a meaningful increase in that run rate. What, uh, is that a yeah, surprise? What does right that now, mean? That's why. Well, it's two they're things. One, Shanghai was already Austin, at full production. Austin, it was really about can we really? you know, really expand this production? And now I think he's looking at the, the macro background. environment in China and realizes that the Chinese economy is not good. and. Mm and Chinese policies are not good for growth. And she has put China, and this is a whole nother interview for another day, but in a very difficult position economically as, and so I think. So he said on the call, um, they asked him about this on the call, they asked Elon about this, and he said that um, he's, they're trying to make it so China isn't such a big deal. Like if China goes down for some whatever reason, um, then they have other factories around the world, like Berlin, Austin, um, they have one in um, Fremont factory. So if they're trying to expand Berlin and Austin to produce more cars. So if China goes down, they have other factories. If Austin goes down, they have other factories. So it's not a big deal if one factory goes down. They have factories all over. Plus they're building one in Mexico. They're currently in talks to build one in India or France, maybe even Canada, hopefully, where I'm from. 
So, um, yeah, they don't want to be so dependent on China if something were to happen. He's hedging his bet a little bit of how much do we want to make in China, and I think that's smart. Okay. So, recognizing that things there are a little bit soft. Um, the uh, potential for surprise here, what is it, uh, Ross? I mean, do you feel like they're very smooth sailing, especially in the macro backdrop, uh, which seems to be brewing a lot more optimistic? Uh, because the chart's one of the few that still is technically downtrending, lower highs if we trace it back to the records. Can we turn this around on that report? Well, I don't know if this report's going to be the catalyst to really launch it into the stratosphere again, because remember, it was trading at 100 times earnings at that time, and now it's looking more like 50 to 60 times earnings. So that multiple contraction, a lot of that is because of interest rates, to be honest, less than performance. Although performance w wasn't great at the beginning of the year, and it's now improving. I think the story that isn't being told is Tesla storage. This battery storage business grew by 220%. Energy storage as a whole and solar grew by 74%. And this is the part of Tesla people just don't really talk about because it's not that sexy. But the battery business is phenomenal and growing well. And it looks like it has about a 20% margin as well. So, you know, this is a, a great driver of future growth for Tesla, relevant of auto. So, yeah, the, the thing about that with the battery storage is why it's not like exploding like the car business right now is because they're focused on the cars, they're focused on FSD. That's going to be huge. The biggest thing we've ever seen when FSD is finally ready, full self-driving, when the robo-taxi is finally ready, that's going to be massive, massive profits. So they're really focusing on the cars, getting more cars on the road so more can be converted into robo-taxis, more can be full self-driving. That's the main focus. And the batteries that they produce and that they buy from Panasonic and other companies are put, being put into the cars. So um, they're, they're at basically capacity right now. So they are making battery storage, but that's not the priority. The priority is the cars. The batteries that they make and buy go into the cars, and the ones that are left over go into the storage. So as soon, 46, Elon talked about the 4680, um, the new battery cell that they're building their the ramping production on that so once they start building a lot more batteries then the storage business is going to explode as well elon said the storage battery storage business with the um the tesla power walls and things like that are going to be as big as the car industry as the tesla like the uh, model three and y industry so he said eventually it's going to be as big but right now they're focusing on the cars as soon as they ramp up more battery production then they can do the storage and that'll blow up as well that's like a sleeping giant um that they got in their arsenal as well as the fsd it's another one so yeah, look out for the storage automotive and now tesla is on a run rate of being a hundred billion dollar revenue company and and one can argue that his valuation is justified in here. And, and for investors, I think, you know, there are not a lot of big cap companies growing revenue by 47%. So it's an impressive nope. Nope. result by any means, That's even true. though margins are lower. Well, when we look at the energy side of the business, uh, uh, where they are um, doing one and a half billion dollars generation and storage revenue, uh, margins there and uh, that portion's contribution to the stock. Uh, how big of a deal is it? Because the margin there is pretty high relative to it's the car. It's not cars, big but now, it's only a but it will be. That's what he said. Well, yeah, it's not even that high relative to the cars. It's a little bit higher, it's but I think not. it's more about the future where you know the car business is you know becoming more competitive, more challenging. Certainly in California, Teslas are everywhere so it's not like this new thing anymore and so when you look at the other parts of their businesses that are super important you've got you know the charging business which just became incredibly amazingly valuable and then you've got store energy storage which is a phenomenal you know uh, i would say moat that they have because no other company can do what they're doing with energy storage and then you look at full self-driving and the software and ai yeah, component knows, of the business and you're like wow so you know, these other revenue drivers might not be that significant relative to autos yet, but will be over time. And I think if you look at Tesla as the whole over time, these are the parts of the business that get actually pretty exciting.
All right. 1.8 million uh -huh. EVs for the year. The target still. Thanks, Ross, uh, for being here live on the earnings. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Ross Gerber, President CEO at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. That's it for MOC. Okay, yeah. So what did we learn today? We learned that the energy storage is a sleeping giant. They're going to be as big as the cars. Uh, we learned that um, the stock is plummeting today <laughs> because they didn't meet uh, margin expectations. The margin was like a point or, or point or two down. So they're like, sell the stock, sell. And everyone, everyone's selling the stock. Not Well, people like that watch this channel that know that are long term on Tesla are just kind of sitting by laughing. But um, yeah, a lot of people are. Let's let's check it out. Tesla stock. Let's see what the stock price is right now. Let's see. 271. So, yeah, it went down from like 298 yesterday. Now it's at 271, dropped almost 20 points. So, yeah, people are. It's so ridiculous. Like the stock market is, is so crazy sometimes. It's like as soon as something like, oh, they heard they didn't sell as much cars or the margins are down by 0.2 and then like you know, these big firms sell it all and like it's so whack. But hey, better opp buying opportunities for people that know, um, people that are in the know like you guys that are watching this channel. Um, yeah, just we know these numbers are meaningless in the short term. It's all about the long term. Oh, and Elon also said, um, if you guys are still here, Elon also said on the call that they we knew this. They're going to be licensing licensing FSD to other automakers, which we all knew for years was going to happen. Obviously, it's going to happen. It's the best. They have the lead in data. They have no there no other com companies even close to the full self driving that Tesla has, plus all the data advantage. So. They, he said they're in early talks with a large OEM to license their um, FSD out to them. So, yeah, we all knew this was coming. Um, it was actually said, though. Elon actually said it for the first time um, on that call. So that was interesting. But, yeah, um, I want to see. Let's keep watching more news videos for today, see if anybody mentions that. They probably won't because it's it's kind of like a long, far off, like, two, three years in the future type deal. So these news guys like to to be like, what's going to happen next quarter? What's the stock uh, going to be tomorrow? Like, you know, they're not really concerned with the long term. But long term, they're going to license it out F to, F, um, to other OEMs like Ford, GM, Volkswagen. They're all going to buy it off of them. And Tesla's going to be making a ton of money and the stock price is going to be I don't know. It's going to be insane, guys. So buckle up. <laughs> it's going to get crazy in the future. But let's keep watching more videos. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Let's keep going.